Hello everyone I hope you're all doing well I am Kirti Sophia Panachan and in today's session we'll be continuing the poem Anecdote of the Jar by Walt Stevens This is part 3 Anecdote of a Jar contains three stanza and in the previous classes we have already dealt with stanza 1 and stanza 2 In this class we'll be learning the last and final stanza. It took dominion everywhere. The jar was grey and bare. It did not give of bird or bush like nothing else in Tennessee. In the first line it took dominion everywhere. Wars have been fought throughout centuries to gain power but here's this plain old jar sitting on a hill and it's got dominion dominion means power and the power of this jar is not only at the hill but it's got power everywhere it simply rules everything just by its placement on this hill in the tennessee wilderness everywhere expands the jar's effect we already know it commands the wilderness but now the jar has begun to take over the world beyond its little area of tennessee this may even include us humble readers okay even us could be there Moving into the third stanza we seem to be getting near the end of this anecdote anecdote means a little story so far the story seems to go the jar was put in tennessee and the wilderness kind of made a vortex around it falling prey and attracted to the command of this emblem of the commercialized world moving on to the next line the jar was gray and bare this poem seems to go back and forth between telling us that the jar has power and then making the jar seem really ordinary after we hear that the jar has taken over everywhere we hear that it's gray and bare gray and bare are not two qualities we associate with ruling our world they are pretty drab and boring colors isn't it we'll take the green of wilderness which unfortunately has been diminished by this jar remember as we learned in the sixth line the jar has made the wilderness no longer wild the next line it did not give of bird or bush give could mean care or it could mean procreate or uh, it could mean seem like that is to give an impression etc the jar doesn't look anything like the natural world that surrounds it it's not green or colorful and it doesn't fly or grow it's not an animal and it's not a plant it also has no way to procreate procreate means to give forth okay unlike plants and animals it relies on men for its creation and it can't perpetuate itself also the jar doesn't care about the world that surrounds it it just sits on its hill on the ground in the air the phrase bird or bush also reminds us of the birds and the bees the euphemism or mast phrase referring to well the sex talk when kids learn about the birds and the bees they're really learning about sex so maybe bird or bush is actually talking about sex the way to procreate a species whether it's through breeding or growing at the very least once again we learn that this jar is not capable in the way that the natural world is the last line of the stanza and also of the poem 
like nothing else in Tennessee. This line ends the poem with a final demonstration of the conflict between the jar and the wilderness. Not only does the jar not have anything to do or give off the wilderness around it, it seems that everything else in Tennessee is connected with the wilderness. If nothing else in Tennessee does not give of bird or bush, that pretty much has to mean that everything else does give of bird or bush. Everything except for the stubborn jar. So everything in Tennessee breeds, it grows or at least cares about and is connected to the wilderness in some way, except the jar. Now we know that this is probably an exaggeration. There is a lot of wilderness uh, in Tennessee and there was probably even more when this poem was written. But there was still human civilization there and we are betting that this isn't the only jar to ever reach Tennessee. The point, however, is that this jar is out of place in the wilderness in the middle of a wild state, possibly in a wild world. Yet out of place at, as it is, it has some kind of dominion. Dominion, as I've already told, means power. It has some kind of power. Perhaps this echoes how humans are slowly covering more and more of Earth's surface. That is, our inventions completely take over, threatening to replace green bush and beautiful birds with nothing but grey, bare roundness. To conclude, we could say the jar could be a medium through which we, as humans, try to understand the natural world we are part of. The more we know, the more the innocence of the environment is corrupted. Gone are bird and bush. The altered state evolves. An anecdote of the jar is a poem that poses more questions than answers. In three short quatrains, the speaker manages to alter a whole landscape in Tennessee and quite possibly the whole known universe by placing a jar on the ground and letting the reader and nature get on with it. So that's all for today. I hope today's session was fruitful for you all. If you like this video, do give it a big thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. See you again in the next class. Bye-bye.